Let's have a look at Palette Master Element 1.3.15. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. If you've watched my other Palette Master Element video, I always give you a disclaimer and it is still here. If the current version works, there is no need to update. However, in 1.3.15, there is one huge improvement and that is official support for Apple M1 processor. Now we can go in and do a two hardware calibration on our SW display. And that is absolutely fantastic. I have the SW271C link up to a Mac Mini M1. On the other side, I have the SW271 link up to a MacBook Air M1. And I have been testing multiple builds for Palette Master Element with multiple different devices. And for the most part, you can go in and calibrate without any issues. There may be one or two settings that you want to avoid, and I will share them with you. Before we go on to talk about the calibration setting, in addition to M1 support in point 15, what you also get is an improvement in Spider X and also Spider 5. So if you have a Spider 5, definitely upgrade to point 15 because there is a much better improvement in grayscale performance or grayscale toning um, on these new versions. This being said, I also wanted to mention one more thing about point 14 as well. And that is if you're using an SW2700PT, definitely you should be running 1.3.14 at the minimum because that version has universal support for all of the SW2700PT firmware that are out there on the market. There are settings that you need to turn off on your display, whether you have a desktop, laptop, Mac or PC before you start the calibration process. And I will leave a link to those videos in the description below. So before you start the calibration process, definitely turn all those settings off. One thing I want to mention is that in 1.3.12, BenQ have introduced a new way for us to choose black point. Before point 12, we choose either absolute or relative. Relative to what, you may ask? That's a really great question. I just know that when you choose relative, it does a much better black tone scaling on the display. But since point 12, you can now go in and dial in the nit value that you want to use for the black point. My recommendation for this is to use 0.3 nits, and this is based on a lot of testing. It tends to produce the best scaling for the black tones without making the black go muddy. So one more thing though that I want to mention about this is that if you have a Spider 5 device, 0.3 is not a good value for you to use. So if you have this older Spider 5 device, I recommend going in and setting that to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is going to give you the best value for a Spider 5, but if you're using any other calibration devices, 0 0.3 is a value that works really well. This is a slide that shows you all of the different firmware versions based on the manufacture date for the SW2700PT. The best way to know what firmware version you have is to look at the regulation tag on the back of the display. But here's the thing, to simplify everything that we do, run at least 1.3.14 or 0.15 so you don't even have to worry about some versions not being able to calibrate the SW2700PT. If you'd like to pause on this chart, you definitely can. This being said, here is a compatibility chart for the various Palette Master Element versions and all of the SW display models. And as you can see in 1.3.14 and 0.15, it's pretty much just green across the board. So you're good there. Now let's have a look at profile type and black point. Let's start out with the Mac. If you're running on an Intel Mac and you're running 0 0.14, 0 0.15, if you want to try to use 16-bit LUT, you can certainly do so. I don't think that there is a bug anymore with the 16-bit LUT. However, if you do find a bug or something like that or something not acting correctly, leave them in a comment below because I do like to hear about them. This being said, if you're running on 1.3.15 and you have the M1 processor, you definitely want to set the profile type to matrix. If you use 16-bit LUT, there is a bug right now based on the M1 graphic output that's causing that profile to be tagged differently and you may be seeing color shifts in the program. So for the best setting on the M1 processor right now, use matrix profile type. From there, the black point recommendation, this is going to be the same for PC as well. If you use any calibration device, 0.3 nits is going to produce the best value. Feel free to vary this if you want to, but based on extensive testing, this is going to produce the best black and also 
the best tonal curve and contrast for the blacks. If you have a Spider 5 device, which is the one that looks like this, definitely instead of using 0.3, use 0.5 nits. And I did run the testing on here and it's going to give you a much better gray tone scaling while still maintaining a high contrast black. For PC, the LUT type, you can certainly use 16-bit and you're going to be okay there. Here are the best calibration settings. This is very similar to the recommendations that I have made in the past. So if you want the best and largest color gamut possible, Panel Native is going to be great, 0.3 nits with an asterisk there saying that if you're using the Spider 5, 0.5. Safe setting is to use Adobe RGB and you can certainly go in and calibrate for DaVinci Resolve in Rec.709 Gamma 2.4. And again, the black point and also profile type is going to be the same recommendation that I made in the other slide. This is pretty much the same on the PC side as well. Rather than using matrix, you can go in and use 16-bit LUT and there shouldn't be any issues whatsoever. A few more things I want to mention is that you can certainly go in and choose any RGB primary that you like to use in your workflow. It does not have to be Pando Native, Adobe RGB, or Rec.709. However, if you want to get the largest color possible from your display, calibrating it in Pando Native is a really great idea. With the programs that are color aware, you're always going to be seeing the correct color because on your computer, there is a color management module that is running and doing all those color conversions in real time. I'll put a link to that video up here and in the description below if you want to find out more. One additional thing that I want to share is that even though you're choosing matrix profile type for Mac users when you're running the calibration in Palette Master Element, you're still doing a true 3D LUT adjustment on your SW display because you are using Palette Master Element. Choosing the way how the profile is built in Palette Master Element matrix versus 16-bit LUT makes no difference at all. It is still always going to go in and adjust the 3D LUT on your display. So you're still doing a true hardware calibration. If you are a window user and you may be running into some calibration issue, if you have installed a program called DisplayCal before, you may have some driver conflict issue. And that driver is coming from the Argil CMS program or the driver that is installed in the system, especially if you have not installed the XWrite device services or any XWrite software. I will leave a link to a video in the description again that talks about this a little bit more if you want to find out, especially if you have used DisplayCal on a PC, and this may help solve your problem. So here it is at the end. These are the recommendations. If you're running on Mac OS Big Sur, the best thing to do is to run at least 1.3.12, but Honestly, I would just go to 0.14 or 0.15. So 0.14 works well for Mac, 0.15 works well too. But if you have the M1 processor, definitely go to 0.15. If you're on Windows, I would probably be at 0.14 or 0.15 at this point, just because it's going to work the best on your system and give you the greatest compatibility. And one last thing, very similar to the way how we started this video. If it doesn't work, don't fix it. So if what you have right now, you can calibrate without any issues. Just stick with it. Questions or comments below. If you want to give me feedback about how your calibrations process is going along, I like to hear about them. So comment down there too. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, head on the bell to be notified. And until next time, in Art We Trust. Oh, wow. I am like, okay. <laughs> All right, two things. Way a lot of headroom, more more than I anticipated. My iPad dropped because I can't see. And improve the grayscale performance. Ah, man, that was so good, okay. And I also have an SW271 linked up to a MacBook Pro. M1 processor, then 1.3.15 is... Ah.